Salam ve billah min şeytan rahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiyullah ati rasulun amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdik raji sadaif wa miskin wa zalim wa jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence, asking for the madad and support of only Allah and for the immense blessings of Ursa Mubarak of Sultanin Awliya Ma Sharafuddin Dabastani Qaddasul Qasiru. And that his nazar be upon us, his lights and blessings be upon us, our family and our communities, inshaAllah. By means of their fayas, their blessings, their nazar, their du'as to, to make everything beautific in our life here and hereafter and every difficulty to be pushed away. Ana abdukul ajeezu da'ifu miskeenu zalimu jahal. And we reminder from myself, we talked about this path and when they break down its realities that the levels of the heart is, is dedicated to the entire understanding of the house of Allah And anybody who wants to occupy and move within that reality then should have been reading that understanding and, and educating themselves in the lataif al-qalb and that is the pathway into the reality of the heart. And when Allah want to dress His servants, He gives them and dresses them from the six powers of the heart. And those are the powers that complete their wilayat and dress that sainthood and dress its light and its blessings. And those are achievable by those whom Allah guides to the turuqs and by virtue of teaching these realities, we can see that without the turuqs it's not possible to achieve. If it's exception that Allah dress whom He ever He wants, however He wants. But the rule is that when we understand how these maqams are achieved, we understand the importance of the turuqs and the tariqahs, the spiritual path and it's not self-help, it's not you read or you're read on Sufism and that you achieve these realities. The very difficult realities to achieve, the basis of which is love and muhabbat. So they have to have an immense love for Allah and their path is based on this immense ishq, immense muhabbat and love and that Allah begin to reflect their heart that, if you love me, love Sayyidina Muhammad so they can't achieve this if they're not immensely immersed within the love of Sayyidina Muhammad With that immense love and ishq, Prophet begins to put into their heart because whom you love you'll be with. When Prophet loves that one who loves him he puts what's dear within his heart. So dear into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is love of Allah and Holy Qur'an, love of his holy family, love of his holy companions and as a result begins to guide them to the love of awliyaullah who are the Muhammadan representatives of that reality on earth. So if they're not from this ishq, these are realities again that cannot be achieved. As a result when Allah dresses them with this light and this love, what happens then? The haqiqat al-juzba that they'll sit and train with these ulul am on how to enter into their heart, how to fight the inner fight of devils, bad character, bad desires and how to open up the energy of their being, understanding the energy. So imagine now somebody who doesn't make tafakkur, how he's going to achieve all these realities? How is he going to achieve now the understanding of inner purification, inner cleansing, inner realities? And how is he going to understand that his iron and his blood or he or she doesn't matter, their blood and iron has to be perfected and clean so that shaitan is not moving within them to an immense degree. And as a result of the inner purity and inner realities, the fires that Allah is dressing, the fires that Sayyidina Muhammad dressing and the fires that awliyaullah dressing upon them 
is adhering and sticking on them. It's not a blessing that comes and passes and goes, it's a blessing that they're able to bring upon themselves and contain upon themselves. The iron within them is being purified, that iron, each cell of that iron like a satellite dish making the hairs to stick up when energy comes, each cell of iron beneath the hair that sticks up is like a satellite dish that collecting and, and activating all these fires and energies, emanation, fires is emanations, lights, blessings, Divine Grace whatever people want to call it. These lights that are coming upon the soul of somebody is coming by virtue of their iron and their body purification. Their iron is bringing it, the blood is bringing it, the reality is dressing them, blessing them, bringing that energy upon themselves. As a result the energy is moving upon their badan, upon their physicality. So if not doing those practices, not doing those understandings then how are they going to receive that juzbah? And the juzbah is magnetism. As a result of their magnetic force, they're literally like a magnet that they put out a charge and as a result people are attracted to them. So the energy that emanate in Haqiqatul Juzbah is what is needed, means that these six powers if they… if Allah doesn't dress the servant with these six realities they cannot be given this type of guidance and irshad for haqiqat al-irshad and the haqiqa, the, the reality because we have a lot of people watching these videos that don't understand Islamic terminology. And we, we met with some and they said they spend like an hour just trying to understand these words that we use. Like you have to have a dictionary on the side to, <laughs> to go through each word. So haqiqat means the reality of magnetism, to open this reality of magnetism and to be a magnetic character in which your heart and soul's power is emanating an immense power, immense reality. As a result of that and it moves at and away from space and time, means space and time is not a barrier for their juzbah. Not only they attract seen but they attract unseen, they not only attract living and they attract those whom passed. The juzbah of their soul through their magnetism attracts many realities towards them. One, the students that are in need of guidance, so as a result that magnetic charge is released upon them. And the students' hearts we've described before in other understandings that when Allah want to guide somebody, He turns on the magnetic charge within their heart. So it's not that our, our brain is guiding us, that we saw some videos and we became interested in it, it's actually Divine opening up the heart. Immediately He turns the charge that, love me. This is what Abu Yazid al Bistami Siru Describe that in all my journey toward the Divinely power, the Divinely oceans of power, when I finally reached into what He wanted to reach, He found that Allah's love for Him was more ancient than His love for Allah Means we only have this love because Allah turned the magnet on. If for a moment Allah God forbid should become angered by us, God forbid, that magnet if it turns off, everything drops. Everything the servant does is, is not in the way of Allah not with the love of Allah They may do many things they think Allah loves but actually it's what shaitan loves and they begin to do very corrupt and, and bad actions. So the true magnetic energy is when Allah turns the qalb and as a result they are and their entire wujud, their entire being is directed towards their Lord Almighty. And then Allah turns that magnet and then they become directed towards the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And then again, again all of those descriptions Prophet begin to turn the charge 
and they have then the love for Ahlul Bayt, the love of holy companions and the love for Ulul Amr, the awliyaullah who will be guiding them. Only by means of that magnetic reality within them they're finding their coordinates. Means how does a bird find where it has to go? How does an ant know? You see the ant is so tiny in just the space of your floor of your house. With who is guiding that ant to get its piece of rice all the way in another part of the house? And, and, and your house to the ant is like a traveling throughout the continent. But the size of it and where it has to go to get its sustenance, who's guiding that ant? With what, with what magnetism Allah puts within that creature that your sustenance is here and immediately it sets out. Who guides the bird to fly where they're supposed to be winter, where they're supposed to be summer, where they're supposed to fly to get their rizq and their sustenance, their food? Means that everything around us is on that Divine GPS. The iron within it is guiding by Allah's coordinates. So Allah puts the coordinates, the angels send the coordinates, the GP, GPS and global positioning satellites from the Divinely Presence are activated and creatures are moving the way Allah wants them to move. It says that everything moves within an orbit like a track, it's nothing random, everything is exactly programmed the way Allah wants it programmed. That's why then when these people they fire off weapons into the oceans that destroy the magnetic charge of these creatures or they explode weapons into the air that has, a, has an effect upon the electromagnetic pulse and energy of these creatures, you see the birds drop out of the sky. You see the, the whales and the dolphins coming up on shore because their entire positioning and guidance system has been destroyed. So it means that everything around us is based on this juzbah. So Allah just says, there is no guidance unless I guide. And this is from the haqiqat al-irshad and the haqiqat, the reality of guidance that Allah has to activate that inner heart so that the charge is activated. That is for the one whom is being pulled in, that their call is being directed from their magnet to seek what Allah wants them to seek. Then the ones whom are establishing themselves in that ocean so that Allah make them to inherit that magnetism and that's the juzbah and, and magnetism that they begin to dress from the magnet, dress from the magnet, dress from these oceans of power and the charge within their heart and the magnet is in the cleanliness in which God wants it of His Divinely Presence, His love of His beloved Prophet, love of His holy books, love of the best of character, the companions, the family, when it's all dressed the way Allah wants it, their magnet is activated. As a result Allah begin to dress their magnet with magnetism and people are attracted to their reality. People are called to that reality and that is the reality of magnetism. The next reality that flows and all of them are continuously opening so it's not just only one opens but Allah is dressing upon all of them as they're all interconnected. That haqiqat al-juzbah and haqiqat al-fayz means the reality of Divinely emanation. So how can somebody receive a fayz if they don't open the reality of their magnetism? So it means that there can be… 10 people sitting and people come new, they dress from the blessings, the blessing comes to them and within no time they've lost it by a day or two days. The blessing came, it went and, and dissipated from their lives. The reality of Haqiqat al-Fayyaz is that they understood on which to hold that charge, that all their meditation practices all of their connection practices, all of the cleansing because it's all being built upon this reality, that all of their haqiqat al-juzbah, their magnetism was to collect 
this emanation. So their magnetic character that is being developed at the same time Allah begins to open, Prophet begins to open and awliyaullah begin to open a magnetic character which is now magnetized and pulling fires and blessings and emanations. So it means whatever fires is in the air their soul is pulling it and the magnetism of their body is drawing it and holding it. Whatever they recite they begin to bring that emanation and blessings, Divine Grace. So it's not just passing through but because of their cleanliness, their meditation, their practices these are very powerful magnets being developed. As a result it attracts all of this Divine Grace and blessings. Whatever they recite it pulls, whatever they attend they pull, whatever emanation is coming for that night or whatever Divine Grace is Allah dressing on a night, a holy night, throughout the night, zikr nights, their soul and their magnetism is pulling upon it and collecting it. As a result they become a source of immense blessings and they have an immense amount of tabarak and blessings upon themselves. Because the soul is becoming energized, a soul without that magnetism will lose the charge. So it means that's why Allah put us within this physical body and to understand the body, the soul and the mind is essential for the path. You can't say, it doesn't matter what my body does, my soul is good, I'll catch these blessings. No, if the body is not disciplined in the way that Allah wounds it, the body has to be able to attract the charge and the soul is like a battery that begins to take it and store it and store it and store it. You know just to put the satellite, what is it, the, the solar panel on your roof and say, okay there's sunny outside I'm going to put solar panels on my roof. But if you don't have a battery to store the power it's, it's not going anywhere, the sun is actually charging the panel. And the panel is depleted because nothing has been stored. What was most important in their understanding of solar power was the development of the battery. So not only you need something that collects the energy which is the magnetism but to have the battery and the soul that is being prepared to take these fires and begin to store it, take the blessings and begin to store it. Until Allah describes like them, they are fulukun mashkoon in Surah Al Yaseen that these big awliya they are like loaded ships. One, they have an immense amount of juzba, so as a result, they put out a charge and many things are attracted to them. They say, don't, students are attracted to them, the jinn are attracted to them, awliya are attracted to them. And that's what Mawlana Shaykh would describe that when these awliya Allah speak, all of them are listening. One because they have an attraction, they have a, a juzba and a connection to them and two they are recipients of immense fires. As soon as they speak the big, big awliyaullah they're sending their fires and their support. That's what enables them to speak in such a difficult condition and difficult world. So the two are now working together because of their magnetism. They have the ability to attract onto those, those immense magnets. As a result of their connection they can pull the fires from these awliyaullah and begin to distribute it to those whom are listening and benefiting. Most of from the jinn world they immensely benefit from these energies and these realities. And these are all from the mu'min and tariqah, realities and tariqah, spiritual beings. They take from these energies, they take the blessings of these energies because they know that these shaykhs are magnets to these immense shaykhs and that their network of pulling energy and making connections. So I don't know if it makes sense by the tongue that the magnetic charge of a shaykh he connects and begins to make a magnetic connection to his shaykh and to the association of shaykhs. As a result of the strong magnetic force 
it releases the fires and the blessings and the emanations from their souls. And that's why they speak what other people can't speak because the association above them is continuously dressing them with immense amounts of Divinely light and blessings. So what's necessary in our life is that understanding of tafakkur, they make the connection, they make the cleansing, they connect with their juzba, with the reality of their juzba is their lifeline. If they don't establish their, their juzba, if they don't establish their magnetism with their shaykhs, how can they guide? No? So you can't go into town and say, okay, you, 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 you are going to represent the tariqah. You can but it's of absolutely no value and that doesn't make any sense because that person not been trained in meditation, that person not been trained in their connection and they definitely have no magnetic connection to the shaykh that talking to them or the shaykh before them that didn't even train them. So when we understand the inner works we can understand the fallacy and what doesn't make sense, right? So then the shaykh can only give that reality to someone whom been trained by them, who connected and the connection is a perfected connection. As a result of that perfected connection that shaykh knows that that one has a strong magnetic connection to them. So their, their magnets are locked, that's why the loyalty of the tariqah. Not a, not a authoritative thing because they don't care, you listen, you don't listen, that's up to you. But to achieve this reality and these realities then you adhere to that, you connect to it, you make sure that I have to connect to this magnet and this is my life and death. And when I connect you know when your heart is connected, you know when your magnetic connection is strong, you feel the pull, you feel the fires. We described in other talks, they feel the energy and last night they asked good questions on, on zero point energy that they trained, they trained, they trained and they begin to put less effort and immediately they ignite because all the, you know these magnets are like a switch, they hit the switch and they immediately feel the charge coming. As a result the shaykh also will train them is turn your switch off when you're not in need of it. Don't walk around with that switch on because it's going to be heavy for people and agitating for people to continuously be connected and then be hard upon people. So a part of their perfection and that's why Prophet described to his holy companions, lower your wings for people because he knows that your womb, you're all angels. The Sahabi kiram they're like angels, higher than angels so he's teaching that that the believer has to lower their wings means turn off your charge so people can draw near to you so that you have a time in which to be of a of a of a approachable reality and then when they're on their teaching is on it's merely a flick of a switch within their heart and the charge comes to the higher magnets and begins to pull the reality of fires towards them because there's no ego in their association, they're not up there saying, no, we, no, no we don't like him, no he's, he's from this country we don't support him. They have no ego, they're, they're in the oceans of the fountains of abundance. As a result of that abundant energy and abundant reality all that they require is that you should be sending your magnet to us, that your juzba should be connected to us. And that we open the reality of this Allah sends fires, Prophet says fires and then the ulul am they begin to send their emanation and their fires. As a result that's a shaykh tabarak, that's a person of immense tabarak, right? So he's now like a power plant for fires. As soon as their association and again space and time is of no reverence, no, no relevance for them. 
say, I have to be sitting on the carpet, you don't have to be sitting on the carpet and you can listen to this 10 years from now and Allah's power is always eternal, Allah's reality is Da'een. You watch Shaykh Nazim now and he passed away how many years ago, he's more powerful now because you're able to hear said from his holy lips and his speech is live and real and is alive in a frequency from Allah's oceans of da'im. So means these, these words of awliyaullah that have been captured for video and audio, this is a barakah and the ni'mat of the last days. Because imagine if you had tapes to listen to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jailani Qaddasallahu what type of energy would be coming from that sound? So this is something that can't be understood but it's in the oceans of eternity. As a result of these energies they're dressing, they're blessing, then that is an immense source of uh, faiz and emanation. And that everything that we listen to them, every sound that comes from them, every association that we're attending from them, they're dressing upon us. So the one whom is meditating and connecting and polishing He's, he's in a continuous state of able to attract that fires. So it means they're able to build themselves to an immense state of realities depending upon how much they want to put into it. So they want to listen every day, they put the subscription, they listen every day, they meditate earlier and then when the association starts they're in a meditative connection and they're catching the fires upon their reality and they're dressing themselves from that reality. That Allah dress them and bless them and begin to with this immense ocean of abundance and the immense realities of their tafakkur and their contemplation, what's the next that opens? Habiqatul tawajjub. So the reality of the tawajju is the conveyance and focusing on to the face. Tawajju is, is the, the face and haqiqat al-tawassul that coming after is how they are going to convey. So haqiqat al-tawajju is the connection to the face. So it means that these realities again that can be achieved and the, the reality of guidance can't be achieved without these. That's why the Turuqs teach step by step so that when somebody says, oh this is a shaykh al irshad this is a shaykh has, he has uh, five tariqahs in his control. One Naqshbandiya is, is immensely difficult to achieve more or less saying that you're controlling five tariqahs under your belt. Doesn't make any sense when these people talk like that. So means this haqiqat now, this reality of tawajjuh is that in their tafakkur and their contemplation not only they learn how to connect and connect, connect but Allah taught to them, inspired within them, connect to that which is not perishing. Everything will perish but the Divinely face. So that in their meditation they continuously reach a state that, I am nothing, I am nothing, that I don't want to exist, I don't want to be anything in your presence, that I am nothing, I am nothing. That's why the loyalty, the reverence, the respect, all of the tariqah was based on manners because these are in, in their official capacity, these are the Muhammadan representatives. It's a respect for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why we said this is all based on love and muhabbat. This is not based on aqal and brain. So when they want to reach the tawassul, tawajju and the, the Divinely face, the power that coming from the Divinely face means that in their meditation that they reach to a state of annihilation that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Just dress me from your Divinely lights and Divinely oceans Ya Rabbi and in their meditation they begin to be dressed by the face of the shaykh.
And there's seven attributes that are dressing and their face is dressed from the face of their shaykh all the way up to the face of Sayyidina Muhammad and the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad is dressed by the face of Allah's Divinely face, Divinely attributes and names and essences. So means that Allah's Divinely essences are dressing the face of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Prophet is dressing the awliya and then from satellites we've described before dresses the face of the ghawth, the ghawth dresses the shaykhs above, then the shaykhs dress below them, shaykhs dress below and then this network of satellites is dressing upon the face. And their face is the only thing that can capture that energy and that power. And as a result Allah dresses from seven essences, seven openings that from their forehead the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the two ears, two eyes, two nostrils and one tongue is seven points dressing their face and these are the eternal attributes that dress their face and as a result Allah dressing from the face of the shaykh to the face of the student and they are in the reality of the tawajjuh and what being conveyed to them of energies of lights and realities dressing upon their soul, dressing upon the different essences that are dressing upon that reality and that's in the Lataif al-Qalb which shows a picture of the face of Shaykh Daghestani, the attribute of Allah associated with that, that Allah dressing the ear of Prophet in the world of light with that Ismullah and that that light and that Ismullah of dressing Prophet dresses the awliyaullah. So then those essences are reflecting upon the student to make them to be raised and dressed by the immensity of those lights and the blessings of those lights. As a result of that connection they are in the reality of tawassul which is the reality of intercession and the conveyance of prayers. So they're all now interconnected. So we want the juzba to have the connection, we want the fires and the lights and Divine emanation to dress us, then they train on how to connect with the face, how to receive the emanations from the face and that becomes from the oceans of eternity and they become from the oceans of al-hayat of Allah's oceans of eternity. Those essences, those realities are from Allah's oceans of eternity, making that servant to be from the real and the reality of who men. Means that they're now in the oceans of guidance of who, where Allah give them hidayat and real hidayat and dressings and that they are being dressed from Allah's ancient oceans of al-wadood because we described before the people of who there are ancient reality of, of Divinely love and they're eternal that the lights that dressing upon them is from Allah's oceans of eternity. So this network of satellite dressing them making them to reach towards their eternal reality. So when the shaykh is connecting to the face of his shaykh then he's now under that tajalli under the immensity of lights and blessings that coming upon them. And at the same time Allah opened for them now the reality of tawassul, convey what you need to convey. If Allah opening for the servant that you connect it to the Divinely face, to the holy face and to the face of the awliyaullah then convey what you need to convey. And that opens for them the reality of tawassul, haqiqat tawassul the reality of conveyance, right? So that they're meditating. They're connecting at that reality they can begin to convey what needs to be conveyed of du'as, of askings, of whatever needs to be 
Asta. So when people say that, why do they go to these people to ask, you can make du'a, Allah yeah everybody can make du'a but when Allah want to open these realities, these are realities that are not understood and people can live thousand lifetimes and not achieve these realities. But when Allah opened for these servants these realities, then Allah gives them a means in which to approach, a tawassul means a means in which to approach. Allah says in Qur'an, seek, seek a tawassul to us, seek a means in which to approach our Divinely Kingdom. Some people have to use a mobile phone to call for help. So anyone who says, oh that's shirk, this is you only rely on Allah, they're liars. Because they need a mobile phone to call the AAA and tow truck and police if they feel a burglar's coming. That is a tawassul. All of hajj is tawassul, seeking a means and a blessing. You're trying to kiss the Kaaba because you want to be closer to the heavens. You have to go to the maqam of Sayyidina Ibrahim to get the barak and tabarak of Sayyidina Ibrahim You go to Zamzam to get from the dress of what Allah dressed upon these waters that are on earth but dressed from paradise. So everything in our life is the reality of tawassul and that's why God says that seek a means in which to approach me. Not the arrogant just say that God is with me. Allah just said, no you have to seek a means in which to reach towards God. That you're just the milk but you want to become ghee or butter, you have a whole process of uh, cleansing and stirring and trials and tribulation until you become ghee. You stir you up really good. Other than that it's just milk. So there's a whole process as a result Allah opens that reality so it becomes two way, the connecting to the face to receive its immense blessings at the same time Allah is that if there's anything that needs to be conveyed at that moment, convey through that channel which is rarely used because their level of belief is that that face that gazes upon me knows entirely what my condition is and that's the level of their faith. Rarely are they required to enter into that connection to begin to convey unless a sudden emergency or something unforeseen. But in the oceans of submission that gives the understanding that that face watching them. When people don't understand the faith of a shaykh, how do you have like this faith, why you like this, explain like this? Their life is not to explain anything why and how things happen or what Allah is, is conveying to them. But this process gives us an understanding that there are souls in which they convey, they meditate, they contemplate and that their soul is in the presence of that face. And that face knows every condition that that person's body is in. They don't need to say anything, then nothing because their whole movement and breath is in that reality. And that gives to them the immensity of their faith. So that spiritual world is not something that can be understood because people are living a physical world in which every moment they're scared, they're worried, they're wondering how's it going to happen, what's going to happen, what's it going to happen like this, we're going to die, we're going to have to do this, do that. And that's because they're only using their physical connection. But when Allah guides, that's why I said there is no guidance unless Allah guides because all of what we just described in the last two nights are all by permission and izzatullah. That's why it's insulting when people say, oh it's only Allah. Who do you think opening all these realities to Allah's kingdom and Allah's presence? It's not only Allah that you say like that by tongue but you have to believe that when you say it's only Allah that you lived that way and you understood that way and that Allah found sincerity in you and opened your heart to be magnetic, opened your soul and your, your body to be a juzbah and to take these emanations, opened your reality to to connect to the Divinely face, the heavenly face, the, the beatific face of Wajik al Kareem of Sayyidina Muhammad and the face of awliyaullah, whatever face that Allah is opening for that servant, these are by the might and the will of Allah that they achieved the immense oceans of tawheed and faith 
and sincerity. As a result Allah dress them and bless them and they can begin to convey through that connection. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha.